make sure you listen to the whole thing and that you put it into context. I don't want a hot take uh, regurgitating one line of several that, I, that I'm about to say. So I'm going to stay here first and foremost as I continue to say, I've said it since last year, I'll say it again, Jalen Hurts is the starting quarterback. He's done nothing to lose the starting quarterback job. I'm also going to say now, Tua Tonga Valoa is too good not to be playing. Tua Tonga Valoa, Alabama's freshman quarterback from Hawaii, is too talented not to be playing. And here's the dilemma, guys. I don't know what you do. I don't know how you solve the problem. I don't know, one, that there is a problem. But, two, I don't know how to begin to take those two statements and make them cohesive on a team. It's clear to me now, Tua Tonga Valoa could be starting almost anywhere he wanted to in the country. I think he's that talented. There, there remains one aspect of Tua's game that we haven't seen that would, would be a piece of the puzzle that we'll need, but I don't think we're going to get it this year. And that piece of the puzzle is, how does he perform when the game's 0-0? Zero, zero? How does he perform when the game is tight, when the game hangs in the balance, when he's got to go out there and give his team the lead? I'm not saying he can't do it. We just don't know. When he comes into the game... Alabama's got a big lead. When he came into the game Saturday, Alabama had a 28 to nothing lead. When he's gone on in, in these other games where he's played extensive playing time, he's had a big lead. So we don't know. We also don't know what he would do on the road in a hostile environment when the game is tied. We didn't you know we saw him go on the road at Vanderbilt. When he went in the game, the game was over. There was no hope of Vanderbilt coming out. We never saw him at Texas A&M to know how he would have handled when that crowd gets ratcheted up and it's loud and the stadium's shaking. We don't know. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to put him in. Problem is, Alabama's got a really good starting quarterback. What do you do? Because I'm of the opinion now, Tua is too talented not to play. And I don't know what the answer is, guys. Maybe it's just to continue to do what you do. To, to play him when you can. Maybe that's the answer. And Nick Saban cannot coach this football team and give it his all by worrying what a player might do in the offseason. And I'm not stirring up anything. I'm not even suggesting but I've heard anything that Tua Tonga Valua might transfer. So get that out there right now. I don't know anything in that regard. But Nick Saban can't consider that with this year's team. He would be failing this year's team if he worried about next year's team. That's not Nick Saban's style anyway. But is a backup role going to be enough for Tua Tonga Valua going forward? I, I feel silly even posing the question because Alabama's 8-0. They're number one in the country. But I've just I've seen enough now. He's too good not to be playing. And I heard Travis Ryer, he had David Morris on, the, uh, the, propri- the proprietor of quarterback country down in Mobile. And he, Travis asked him, what do you do going forward? And David said probably the correct answer here. You don't do anything. And, and that's what I suspect Alabama will do. But I also got to pondering as a sports talk show host will do. I don't want to make a problem where there's not one. And there's not a problem. Alabama's 8-0. They just beat 
one of their main rivals by 38 points. Tennessee at no point in that game came close to scoring an offensive touchdown without Alabama's help. You know, they, they did – they had an offensive touchdown for a millisecond there, but that was wiped off the board, and even that came, what, after a fumbled punt? So without Alabama's help, Tennessee had no chance of scoring, okay? I'm not trying to make problems where there are none. I'm not trying to be rat poison to steal a phrase from Nick Saban. But is there any scenario where a two-quarterback system could work? There's an old coaching adage that if you have two quarterbacks, what that means is that you don't really have any. But Alabama does. They've got two really good ones. This isn't a situation where you're playing two like we saw with A.J. McCarron and Phil Sims where you're letting them compete. This isn't that situation at all. Alabama's got two quarterbacks who can win. I, there's no doubt in my mind that Alabama can win with Tua Tonga Valoa just as they can win with Jalen Hurts. I will throw out the one variable that I've said from the beginning with Tua Tonga Valoa. If he's your quarterback, you're going to have more turnovers, in my opinion, because he's going to sling it. And there's a lot of positives that come with that because the passing game becomes a lot. There's also a negative, as we saw in the red zone. When he threw, he, he didn't see the linebacker there in the middle of the field, and he, he basically threw it right in his chest. When you throw the ball a lot, you're opening yourself up to more turnovers. And he and Jalen have the same amount of interceptions on the year. One. So I'm not, I'm by no means killing to it, but that is a factor that you have to take in. When you analyze his game, he's going to put the ball in the air more. When you put the ball in the air more, you're opening yourself up to more turnovers. I don't know the answer. I think David Morris on Travis's show probably said it best. What do you do going forward? You don't do anything. You've got a starting quarterback. You've got a backup quarterback. But I know this. Tua Tonga Valoa can play. Jalen Hurts can play. Can we petition the NCAA so that both of them can be on the field and play quarterback at once? Selfishly, I want to see more of Tua. I like watching him play. And this isn't me saying Jalen can't. I think Jalen's still the starting quarterback. I don't think anything's changed in that regard. But I know the offense gets juiced when Tua Tonga Valoa comes in. And when they get juiced, they're making explosive plays. And when Alabama came out in the second half and they started going fast, Tennessee had no answer. I don't know that there's any way that you can play two quarterbacks other than the way Alabama's doing it now. You have a starter. When the game gets out of hand and gives way to the second team, you bring in Tua. I do like the fact of what Nick Saban's doing of getting Tua Tonga Valoa snaps with the first team offense. I like that. He, so when he's made the, the decision that, okay, we're going to take Jalen out, we're going to leave the first team offensive line in, we're probably going to bring in Najee Harris as the running back, Josh Jacobs as the running back, and we're going to let you throw to your starting receivers. And, you know, I, I basically call the freshmen the, the co-starters. But they leave, you know, they they left the starters in, too. Calvin was out there. Cam Sims was out there. I just know it's really difficult to defend Alabama's quarterbacks that they have right now. And there are teams across this country that would crawl to Tuscaloosa to take one of them off Alabama's hands, and Alabama has them on the same roster. The question is, how do you utilize the big problem? I don't even want to call it a problem. The big big thing you got to figure out for next year is who's a starter. I I think it's a. I I don't know that we've ever seen anything like this. A guy that's had a lot of success as your starter hasn't done anything to lose the job, but the backup is so dynamic. Don't you have Don't you have to give him a chance to win it too? I don't know what to do. We'll worry about next year. Next year. 
But, guys, what do you do this year? I want to hear from you. What do you do this year going forward? The question, and that's you don't do anything. It's it's working right now, and then you worry about the future in the future. Maybe that's the best answer. All I know is I can definitively sit here today and say Tua Tonga Valoa is too good not to be playing. The problem is Jalen's too good not to be playing. So I don't know. I don't know. You probably don't do anything. This was my worry. You'll recall I said this at the beginning of the season through fall camp. If you play Tua and he plays well, you're going to start to question. And the questions have started. And that's fine. What happens in the media and amongst the fan base, as long as it's kept there, isn't a big problem. The problem is it's not kept in the fan base. I've already read multiple posts on Alabama message boards that Tua should be playing, that Tua should be playing more. I've read multiple posts about a two-quarterback system. This is how it starts. And it, don't get me wrong, great problem to have. That means you got two great quarterbacks. You just got to keep it out of the locker room. You got to keep from the wide receivers picking favorites because you guys saw it. They pointed it out on the broadcast. Calvin Ridley was a little frustrated by a couple of Jalen's throws. Did you see that? It wasn't frustration that he took to the sideline. It was frustration that he showed on the field through hand gestures, through his hands up in bewilderment. Did you see that? I'm not going to make anything more of it than it is. But if it gets into that locker room with the wide receivers, you have the beginnings of a problem. But Alabama has no problems right now. There ain't no on the season. They're in a bye week. They're number one in the country, unanimous in both polls. Every first place vote. So life is good. They got two weeks to get ready for a resurgent LSU team that's going to come in on November 4th. And you got a good football team. Your defense is playing well. Your injury situation looks pretty good headed into the bye week. I'm not going to kick up trouble for this team. All I know is that Tua Tonga Valoa is too good not to be playing. 